What's going on, YouTube? This is your boy, Jamar84, here again for the final part of the final of the reunion. Part 2, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta reunion. This reunion, this part, I think we can honestly say was significantly better and a lot more interesting <laughs> than the first part, which really didn't give us too much of anything. I really can't even remember like anything I really was interesting of the last part except for uh what was it? Mimi's comment about Jocelyn and her and Jocelyn talking about Mimi's breath. That's really the only thing I remember at this point, which means the shit was boring as fuck. But we are here <laughs> for part two. Now part two started off and I'm so glad this is the last time I will address this because I pretty much said this over and over. And over again about Kirk and Rashida. So, you know, they show the clips about all the things that Kirk has said. And Mona goes to him and is like, you know, how can you, you know, how can a husband say to his wife, like, how can you, what kind of husband tells her wife to abort the child? And he's just like, well, you know, his old nonchalant ass attitude, like, well, you know, it was just bad timing, this, that, and the fourth. I'm like, and this is what Mona Scott said, too. She was like, you know, you, it takes two to make a baby. Like, if you talking about it was bad time, it was bad time. Well, it was bad time for you, for you to fuck her on her period, you know? <laughs> this is, She can't do this on her own. You have to implant the sperm into her uterus to attach to the egg. You are a required piece of this equation for this to happen. So you look at her like she just decided, hey, I'm going to get pregnant. Bloop. You know, it don't work like that. And I'm just like, dude, Kirk refuses to take any responsibility. He'd be like, oh, yeah, I was wrong, but she did X, Y, Z, element of P and shit. I'm like, Kirk, you look like a bitch. You look like a bitch this in pretty much this entire season. And it, y'all <clears throat> making K. Michelle leave and go out to goddamn New York. Take Kirk. Take Kirk ass. Rashida, Rashida ain't did. Um, she, Rashida can stay. I don't really have any reason, real reason enough to just kick her off the show. But Kirk can go on somewhere. G Rashida, keep continuing with that lawyer. Get get this business on because I just I just can't deal. Because even while he was showing them the clips, and that's why something ain't right. And you know, y'all know for those of y'all who saw the real tea on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, y'all know uh, Seiko's and her gossip. She was talking about the whole shit ain't real. This man was sitting up here watching the clips of him cheating on his wife on national television and laughing about the shit. Like, okay, and this just makes me look at this like, dude. Either either this is fake, or you just really that fucked up. <laughs> either this is fake, or you're just really that fucked up. But they was trying to. Uh, Mona Scott asked Benzino because you know he was the one he was with Benzino and Bobby V and he was blah, blah and all that stuff. He was like. Are, do you, Benzino, feel at all responsible? And Benzino was like, you know, well, he didn't know that there was going uh, there was gonna be there, or Bobby was going to have all these bitches and stuff over. I'm like, now, Benzino, let's think about this for a sec. If Bobby Valentino, let's, okay, so you, you and Kirk are, you know, at home. If Bobby Valentino says, hey, do y'all want to come hang out at the, at the, uh, the lodge, or whatever the fuck the shit was called, the lake, the cabin, whatever, do you think it's just gonna be y'all three? Now, mind you, it could it's possible, but I mean, how often do just three dudes get together and it doesn't involve bitches? Like, come on. What 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 are the three dudes gonna do in a cabin? Let me not even go there. <laughs> Cause y'all know. Yeah, I know where my mind just went. That was that's a whole nother demon. That's a whole that's a whole other story. But anyway. So Benzino pretty much did. He feels like, you know, yeah, I felt, you know, kind of responsible. But then Rashida was like, you know, well, in, auction, in actuality, it wasn't Benzino's fault. He was like, he, okay, yeah, he may have put him in a bad situation, but it was Kirk who committed the actual act. Okay? Kirk is the one who actually kissed and smacked and smelled and did all types of other nasty and ungodly things with these women. Mind you, Kirk you know what? Who's who's I don't know who's the originator who originated the saying, but I think I heard Bondi Blue say it. 
was like, Kirk looks like a, uh, a somebody's knee. I said, <laughs> I said, Kirk, you look like a knee. You look like an elbow, bitch. <laughs> That's too funny. But, Kirk, we already know that you ain't shit. You're talking about, oh, y'all are trying to look at my side of the story. Y'all are trying to see my side. Don't nobody give a fuck about your side because your side don't make no goddamn sense. And either way you try to spin it, the shit was wrong and you need to get slapped in the fucking face for it. And Rashida, you need to go ahead and find you a real man because clearly you're in an unbeknownst lesbian relationship. And this was the kicker. Before I move on, I'm going to say this and I'm going to finally leave this Kurt shit alone forever. Well, until next season. But anyway, so Rashida was like, okay, Kurt. Let's say the shoe was on another foot. Let's say the shoe was on the other foot. And you saw me with some with some other guys and we was having this fight and you said you said the same thing I said and let's just pretend like you were me. What would what would what would you do? He could be like, Well, we wouldn't be together. Then what the Hold on, hold on, hold on. Then what the fuck then? How are you gonna sit here and try to bring uh bags and bo uh, baby clothes and a new car and shoes and shit and just expect everything to be motherfucking hockey damn dory when if the shoes on the other foot you wouldn't have gave it a fuck and y'all would have been together no way so what makes you think that you were just this a special guy that can just go out and do whatever the fuck you want to come back and everything just be okay uh-uh you ain't you you ain't got you ain't got it like that at all <laughs> in any way shape or form Kurt. so please we can take you Take you and your situation and just move you over there until next season, season three. We are not going to talk about Kirk and Rashida and their shit no more. So, this, so they move on to uh, Mimi and her mini outbursts and how she was so angry throughout the season. They show all the clips of her all up in everybody's face. Like, y'all know when Mimi talks, hey, look, when Mimi was getting mad and getting into an argument, this be the other person right here. She be right here like this, all up in the motherfucking face, giving them all kinds of carbon dioxide. And I'm like, D we, I don't need to feel the breath of every word that you say. I can hear you clearly, bitch. I don't need, you do not need to be all up in the motherfucking camera. You, no, that's not necessary, Mimi. It was never necessary. But it, needless to say, um... After they show all those clips and shit, she's like, you know, I'm really not an angry bitch. It's just when I have reason to be angry, I'm just angry. I'm like, okay, girl. But anyway, in the middle of that, Stevie J tries to apologize. And and it was random. I'm just like, okay, you're trying to say you want to be this and you want to be this kind of person to your mom, or to your daughter, I'm sorry. And did y'all see Jocelyn over on the side? Like, mm, I know Stevie lying. He, he, he ain't about that shit. Stevie taking on these lies. I'm just... <laughs> Jocelyn's face was just like, nigga, please. And Mimi was like, girl, uh, Mona's like, do you accept this apology? No, because many times Stevie J will apologize and do the same shit over and over and over again. I'm glad to see that you're learning, Mimi, because the first season and the beginning of this season, we was looking at you like, girl, we don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> you're just another being stupid, and if you're just going to keep on being stupid, there's nothing that we can do. So then they talk about the subject of Nico. And they talk about, you know, how he's a fake Stevie J and how he's this, how he's that, what Arian had to say about him and that he's inauthentic. And uh, their whole break was breakup or whatever and how it happened on TV and whatnot. And um, next thing you know, Mona's like, we're going to bring Nico on stage. I said, oh, well, we knew about this from the previews from the episode before but it was just like okay so he comes out <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite this is for some reason this is like one of my favorite parts of the reunion as soon as nico walked onto the stage k michelle said mm -mm, deuces i'm out and left the freaking stage y'all she still up the deuces it was like i ain't even i ain't even gonna get into this shit because y'all know ooh, hold on something in my eye Y'all know K. Michelle and uh, Nico don't too much look eye to eye after he got caught being called out for being, you know, supposedly up and down low. Do I believe it? I really don't care. To be completely honest with you, it really wouldn't matter to me either way. But needless to say, so after K. Michelle moves and she leaves, Nico walks up on the stage and he's walking towards Stevie J. You know, Stevie J <laughs> squares up with that face. <laughs> Y'all know Stevie's looking at him like... <laughs> I 
<laughs> I don't know why, but Stevie J's mouth just turns. Never mind. I didn't want to go there, but it was it was funny to watch those two stand next to each other. I'm like, why does it look like Stevie J is looking at a contorted mirror at the circus? <laughs> but so that's asking Nico questions and whatnot, and so he's like, you know, me and Mimi still together. Me and the rest of the world was like. Huh? What? <laughs> Wait, what, you, what the fuck you mean? Relationship? Uh, Mimi, girl, we... Uh, is that why you got those titties, girl? That's why you got those titties in there. I fucking knew it. I did not know that Mimi was supposed to be still in a relationship with this man. Are you kidding? Mimi, what? Why? I'm, I'm certain that the dick isn't that good. I am certain it can't be that good for you to stay with this man. It his. Do you put a paper bag over his head during sex? Because that mug would make any pussy dry, in my opinion. I'm just... I, it, me, me, it, it is what it is. If you like it, I love it, bitch. But uh, I'm just saying, it couldn't be me. <laughs> couldn't be me. But... So, how, how did they get on the topic of money? I think they talked about the whole Rolex watch and how it, uh, real Rolex watches don't tick. And he got into a, a dispute with Mona. like, you know, you know, nothing. I never do nothing that's fake. You know, blah, blah. Look at my history. Yada, 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 yada. And then, of course, Stevie J chimed in and he threw a bunch of money over at Nico. And I was like, oh, now this, now, before I go on, I, was, I think I said this a couple of times. I was like, look. If I, I know me, if I was an audience and bitches up here throwing money and shit, I would have hopped on that shit and started to collect without an ounce of shame because gas is high, I have bills to pay, and a bitch just needs some money because, and y'all going, and the audience and the cast, well, I'm, I'm understanding why the cast members couldn't do it, but shit, them audience members, I guess they were probably security, but shit, I would have been out there and be like, uh, I would have been like, uh-huh, excuse me, pardon me, one second, I'll be out of your way, and just to... You know, I would have been up there collecting, but shit. I guess the security would have carried them out or something, but I just would have at least gave it some thought. But anyways, back to the reunion. So, Stevie J throws his money and all that good shit, and then Nico's like, you know, these are ones. These are uh, these are just a whole bunch of singles. And he tries to pull out some money and talk about he, uh, Mona Scott said, I saw some hundreds over there. I'm like, I guess, girl, but he, what he said, this is Thursday bread. I'm like, are they recording this on a Thursday? Is that probably, is that because, is that why it said Thursday bread? But I was like, shit, that might be why, that might be the reason right there why Mimi's staying. Mimi maid service may not be doing as well as she may let us to believe. So, you know, Nico got some bread. But, are they in a relationship still? That's the good, mm. Mimi was, Mimi never, when she asked, when they were asked about it, she didn't really confirm or deny. She just kind of was like, you know, we do what we do, it is what it is, whatever. I'm just like, so are y'all in a relationship or not? Like, you didn't really, because this is kind of like, we. nobody knew what the fuck was going on. We knew, we thought that you were single, bitch, okay? We understood you to be single, but anyways, it is what it is. <sighs> so now we get to the part of this reunion where, you know, we talk about the whole Benzino smash the homie video and who said what and blah, 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 blah. And they talk about how it was rumored that he was that he had sex with Jocelyn. Or rather, Joc or rather, Carly Red told Jocelyn that Benzino told her that he slept with Jocelyn. And Jocelyn was like, that's a fucking lie. That's always been Jocelyn's response. That's a fucking lie. <laughs> and <laughs> Jocelyn was like, I don't like it with you. I need I need to have somebody with a neck. I can't kiss your neck if you ain't got no neck. <laughs> I never believed that to be true. I couldn't even see them together. That would just be nasty. But he made this whole smashing the homie video, and Carly Red is like, you know what the fuck, and uh, they went to this clip about how Carly, well not Carly, but uh, you know Benzino and Stevie J had that whole fight. You know we ain't bros no more. And this is a classic example about how when dudes fight. Dudes will argue and say shit, and then the next day they really they cool they cool again. It'll, they bump it out and they all good again. Dudes don't really hold like no grudge for real, for real. Like not no li real legitimate friends. And they if they come across a rough patch, they get over that shit. Females 
whole different story. But that's a that's a whole different topic. We'll have to get, <laughs> get into a whole other day. But um, then they pan off to where Menzino, or rather Carly was trying to talk about, you know, he be trying to fuck everybody on the goddamn set. And then um, they showed a clip about when, uh, when they was at the dinner table. And it was like, you know, when Jocelyn was like, uh, Benzino sent me two DMs at like six in the morning, and Erica was like, "You too." He tried to hit me up at like four o'clock in the morning, and then, and, and K Michelle was like, "Girl, they tried to come me too, girl." <laughs> and then Aria was like, "Shit, he tried to grab up in my puss too." So Kelly Red's like, "Well, goddamn, he tried to fuck almost everybody in the motherfucking crew." <laughs> Somebody was like, "Benzino is loving the crew, baby. He's loving the crew, but." When I think Mona Scott, because I really, I looked away for a quick second, and I wanted to know, did Mona Scott ask the audience, like, is there anybody out here in the audience that Benzino had tried to fuck with? And why did a, uh, one of the queen, one of the girls, one of the little gay dudes was like, <laughs> then Benzino was like, the fuck? But you see, you know what, Benzino, that may have been, you know, for a key key, but you didn't really deny. So... We're going to leave that where it is, but you, okay, girl. But needless to say, they, <laughs> that was, that was kind of funny. I was like, D does Benzino, I mean, does he, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I just thought it was funny that a dude stood up. Like, wouldn't that be funny if it was a scandal that came out about him dating, dating dudes? Ew. Bad mental image. I'm sorry about that. Ew. 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 It's nine o'clock. Ha! You didn't get me. <laughs> so we come to this family feud, okay, with Erica and Mignon, Mignon, whatever her name is, and Scrappy and Mama Dracula. So they talk about the whole fight in the kitchen deal, and I always thought, and I never really understood, like, how that fight escalated so fast. Apparently, Erica was called a bitch, but I, it just seemed like there was so much that was taken out of the footage that we can't never really know what it was that happened. Because that still confuses the fuck out of me. I'm still completely unsure as to what exactly it is that happened. But it doesn't really matter now because it's over. But then we pan forward to uh, later when Mignon and Mama Dracula got into a fight. And uh, Mama Dracula talked about, you know, smoke a straight shooter to uh, Mignon, Erica's mama. And then she came back and was like, bitch... No, no, Mona asked her, was that too far? And he was, she was like, you know, yeah, I feel like it was. It's that the fourth. And Mignon was like, yeah, because I'm 11 years clean, bitch. How about you? And I was like, ooh, yes, Mignon. You better get your, uh, you better let rehab fix your life, okay? That's what's up. Uh, that's definitely a milestone. I know that's probably not easy from what I hear from most addicts, but. Then here comes this part where it, it didn't even flow right. It didn't even make sense. So when. Scrappy was asked about, you know, did you cheat on Erica with any other females? And he was like, no. And he asked uh, Erica, did he, did he believe her? She was like, no. <laughs> and blah, yada, yada, yada. But then Scrappy started going on this tangent about, oh, well, you know, since you always airing out Scrappy laundry, let's air out Erica. Don't nobody ever air out Erica. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He going to say something. She was trying to mess around with somebody's husband and got pregnant. Erica was like, nigga. Oh, okay. I, I messed around with somebody's husband. Psh. I was like, Scrappy, that sounded like some bullshit that you made up because you was mad and you ain't had nothing else to say. That's not a good look, baby. Don't be sitting up to trying to make up no lies on national television to make you look better. <laughs> that ain't gonna work. So here comes this little back and forth tobacco between Shay and Erica. Part two. <laughs> so apparently Shay is dating someone else now. Okay. And at first, you know, they was going to, they was, Mona was trying to see, was they going to engage in any kind of, you know, real fight again? And at first, you know, Shay was like, you know, that's done, that's past, you know, me and her are never going to be friends, this, that, and the fourth. I'm not with him, she's not with him, it's done, it doesn't mean anything. But then, right at the last minute, she was like, Erica couldn't uh, keep a man anyway, or something like that. And she was like, what's wrong, my dad's my daddy calling me, I'll call him back. But, um... That just made me lose my goddamn train of thought, bitch. 
uh, Erica was like, you know, Erica couldn't keep, well, Shay was like, Erica couldn't keep a man and none of that. And she was like, I can have yours whenever I want to. And talk about how Erica has saggy titties. Now, mind you, Erica's titties did look a little saggy. I ain't even gonna lie. They looked a little, little saggy. But she was, and but Shay kept doing like, fix your titties, fix your titties. Man, Erica was like, bitch, fix your motherfucking face, bitch. I was like, oh, damn, girl. I mean, Shay isn't, Shay isn't ugly. I've seen much uglier bitches, but she's she's very powerful in the face. Her face structure is kind of like, hmm. <laughs> but she was like, fix your face, bitch. And then she was like, you're going to always be the motherfucking family pet. I was like, oh, damn. Erica, that was a good read. That was a, that was a, that was a good read, girl. I, high five, bitch. High five. So to close out, you know, pretty much the reunion, we had K. Michelle and her ass perform. Because that, K. Michelle, I did not, oh my goodness. Yo, that booty was so distracting. I couldn't, I wasn't even listening to the song half the time. I'm just sitting there looking at the ass like, that thing is just, <laughs> it's just so distracting. Like, oof. Isn't, y'all remember in the BET Awards and Erica Badu turned around and walked with that stank booty? That was just as distracting when uh, K. Michelle was trying to perform a song with her ass just out and just ex exposed to the viewing public. And we just all like, you know, <laughs> but when you had a frontal view, then I can, then I was listening. But once they turned to the back, I was just like, <laughs> but lastly, this is, well, this is a, a hell of a way to end the reunion, boy. We end up with uh, Miss Jocelyn Hernandez and all her hilarious sayings. I love Jocelyn. Jocelyn really made this, <laughs> this season entertaining with all the funny shit she be talking about. But Mona Scott at the end asked uh, Stevie J, "Do you enjoy what? How does she? How does she word it? Y'all, let me know in the comments if y'all can remember." She was like, "Is Jocelyn's mouth something that you enjoy, or is Jocelyn's mouth something that you?" Gets turned, get turned on by something along as the lines. Do you like Jocelyn's mouth? And she tried to refer it as a way, you know, how Jocelyn talks, how she speaks. But then everybody else was like, "Oh, <laughs> you know, anybody who's not old enough to understand that joke, you don't need to." And then Jocelyn turned, <laughs> Jocelyn turned around like, "I did, bitch. Are you really about to sit here and take this and do this joke?" You know, Stevie J. I'm not even about to try to imitate the face that Stevie J. made when when Jocelyn looked at him. It was probably one of the ugliest of the entire season. But Jocelyn had to make it known that since she know that everybody got that joke, she was like, look, I'm going to let y'all know now, I hate to suck dick. I'm like... <laughs> I don't know why, but I am secretly shocked. I... Okay. I understand that not everybody is into that shit, so. Uh, but that's how they decided to close the reunion, <laughs> was on the fact that Jocelyn does not like to suck dick. <laughs> and, of course, we're going to miss K. Michelle. They confirmed that she's going to be going to uh, Love and Hip Hop New York. Will I watch? Probably not. I'll give it a couple. I'll see how K. Michelle... What she brings to the episodes, I may watch a couple and see how I like it and then decide from there if I'm going to continue watching. But I'm definitely going to miss her in Atlanta. Like, her personality just blended well with the Atlanta cast and it was just so much better. But, you know, she has to move on and pursue her uh, singing career. I'm going to uh, purchase her album, Rebellious Soul, at midnight when it drops. Make sure you guys go pick that up too. Because that VSOP song, that's my shit. <laughs> that's my song. Very special. That's my shit. But uh, make sure you guys go cop that tonight. And um, also, I was going to say that in the end of the video, if you guys are familiar with my Q&A with J Series, um, just email me at uh, jamar84, J-A-M-A-R-84 at gmail.com. And I will read your letter, and they will be featured in episode, which I believe, where am I? I'm about to be at episode six. So, and also, whatever you want to title the video, whatever you want me to title the video, put it as the subject line in your email, and I can read it, and I can give you advice on whatever your situation is in one of my videos. So, make sure you guys hit me up on that. And, oh, <clears throat> tomorrow, 
Make sure you guys are tuned in because the new season of Bad Girls Club starts tomorrow. I'm so excited. I can't wait because that's been my favorite thing to review. Even though I miss reviewing. I, don't get me wrong. I love my love and hip-hop reviews because of all the fuckery. But I, that was where I started from. That's where I really started my reviews was on the Bad Girls Club. So I'm really excited about that. But I've, cold, I've held you guys up long enough and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Bye-bye.